I don't like shooting games as much as my friends. What they have done has to be some of the most important changes I have seen to gaming. I won't go over how they evolved through the years, what I love about them, and what makes me not have the same taste for them as I wish I could have. Through the years, gaming has evolved unbelievably, with shooters being prevalent and right at the start, going from Galaga to Contra, Contra to Narc. With Galaga, you had a very basic rail shooter where you were just stuck going left to right waiting for the enemies to come to you, and you could shoot ahead and try to predict their movements, but it was a very basic game. Then with games such as Contra releasing, allowing you to have vertical movements of your character, left to right directions to actually run through levels, as well as omnidirectional shooting, it opened up the market a lot for what we could do with video games. Then PC Gaming came in and hit with force as it released a game called Maze War, which was never actually released. So the first true first person shooter game, the grandfather of shooting games that came out, was a game called Battlezone, where you played as a tank trying to get other tanks in this polygonal style video game that I don't recommend going to go play. Then it only took about 12 years from there for Wolfenstein 3D to come out, and only a year and a half from there for Doom to release. The real game's not that dramatic. The build up of shooting games took some time to get there. But then it happened, and Rare grabbed Nintendo, threw them on their back, and carried them all the way through the life of the N64, releasing some of the best games, including GoldenEye. GoldenEye was a true FPS where you were sitting there as James Bond looking through his eyes, and it did have tank controls as we haven't learned camera movement yet, so you'd have to turn your character before you could move, sure, but it added things to the game that to this day the industry still doesn't use. The two biggest ones with the first that we don't see a lot is it had focused damage, which means that if you shot someone in the arm, they would grab it, or if you shot them in the leg, they would now limp, they'd grab it in pain, which would make it easier for you to A, take them out, and B, actually have some unique gameplay and no one's gameplay is going to be the exact same as their interactions are all going to be different which was huge and the second one was that the game promoted stealth over destruction and being for a first person shooter where a gun is your main source of everything it was amazing to actually go through a level and not have to kill people as that would make it so you could go through and have a whole true spy approach in the genre that didn't actually allude to anything stealthy. Stealth wasn't new to video games, but it was incredibly rare to find, and because of the potential it truly had, Metal Gear Solid had found its place within the gaming world, giving it some of the most iconic missions in both storytelling and function. And with the creation of storytelling within a shooting game that was more than just this is your objective, it helped open up a whole new line of gaming, which was the storytelling aspect, where it wasn't just, okay, here you go, here's a game, go ape shit, go shoot everything in your way, get to the end. It was a, here's a story we can give you that gives you emotional ties that you can actually play through and feel like you're a part of. Then Valve came in and pff, kicked open the fucking door and was like, and released the game Half-Life. Half-Life was a beautiful blueprint that did so many things right, and one of the biggest ones was they made it feel like the AI had a sense to live. The easiest way to explain it is look at the grenades in the game, where if you threw it, they would run away from it instead of standing there like fodder, or if you jumped to make a noise to try to lead someone to you, they'd try to flush you out with a grenade first to make sure you weren't an enemy. And what's scarier is if you were in a firefight versus five people, Two or three would leave and they'd try to flank you, coming behind you to actually take you out. So there's actually tension in every fight now. It wasn't just who had the bigger gun. The next thing they brought was a sense of purpose within the levels, where the character was walking through an actual world, not going level by level like from the water world to the lava world. It was this room to the next, going from the building to the city to the building, where you actually had progression within the world itself. And not that you were built for the world, but the world was built for you to explore. We started off this in the 1980s with Warzone, and now we finally hit 2001 with the release of Halo Combat Evolved. Get out of here before it's too late!
On an insane time crunch, Halo was remade, overhauled, and even forced out through three different genres of going from an RTS, a real-time strategy, to a third-person shooter to finally a first-person shooting game. And when it was released, even on that last couple months of reworking the entire game, they finally made some of the most innovative changes that happened again since 1996. One of the biggest changes that it actually brought to the whole gaming market was camera control. Because before, if you had any shooting game, it was called tank controls. Where if you wanted to turn and shoot at something, you'd have to turn your whole body and either walk that way or shoot that way to turn your whole body to go in that direction. Well, if they created a system that would actually let you move around comfortably using a controller still, using the second joystick. As simple as that sounds, that's still an innovation we use to this day for camera control within almost every video game is it's such a universal thought now. Why wouldn't this control the camera? And that was just one of the big changes. The next biggest change was weapon limitations. Instead of having an entire weapon wheel with your character holding up to 30 weapons at a time, they now just limited you down to two. Doing this now puts strategy within the game itself, especially playing multiplayer, as you weren't just this walking arsenal, but you actually had to think and strategize about what you're gonna do as having one big gun and a secondary smaller usually resulting in a pistol. The second biggest change which happened in Halo 2 was the idea of regenerating shields, which we still use in video games today for shooters, in the matter of regenerating health is if you stay off combat, your health would regenerate, or at least your shield, and that's still used to this day in other games such as Call of Duty and Battlefield, letting you actually heal from staying out of danger. Half-Life made the AI feel like you were going from dominoes to checkers, and then Halo grabbed checkers and turned it into chess, changing the game dramatically again in how AI would react to each other. They now had AI that had different health bars where you would have either five small grunts to one leader of the alpha of the group, or maybe you had three big ones that were just them with the even more colossal dude. Because of this, you now had limited ammo that you could use on them. You had to actually think about what weapons you use on what enemy and top it off, the enemies would react to who died. It was amazing because you would see three grunts. If you took out the elite with them, all of them would run in panic, screaming, Oh, the leader is dead! They got Elite! Run! And it was amazing, because you hadn't seen that before, and it would actually take them a minute to regroup and start fighting you again. And that created unique voice lines for different characters, and actually made the enemies more memorable, because they were a unit as well. The next big thing is that it had mass to them within the levels. It genuinely felt like you were playing a full mission. The biggest thing is that sometimes nothing was happening, and it gave that downtime. It wasn't always war, and that didn't mean it was far away, but it didn't mean that's all you had to do. It gave you time to be human again, and gave the atmosphere to the world that you were actually traveling in. With innovations and key details and every huge movement happening in gaming, there's also a thousand little ones you don't see on the side. And the biggest thing is that with all these changes, we've started to actually lose a lot of what made those games great in the newer titles. We now have problems like where instead of having the actual difficulty being the AI thinking around the player, we now have different things like endurance spells, like in Destiny where everything has a health pool and to make it harder, they just increase it. So now you're just shooting bullets at something that only reacts to its own patterns, not to what you do anymore. And because of stuff like that, it now becomes the health bar that's the enemy, no longer the enemy itself. It feels like there's no uniqueness or details between a lot of the enemies in these games. And even with stealth games now, if you play Elder Scrolls where stealth was meant to be a huge thing, it's now magically bind to something else like your actual skill points where, okay, say you're level 1 but you're behind a building, they'll still see you if you draw your sword. And it's things that are just magically binded to get past actually trying to create AI that would listen to the character. RNG is the biggest thing for me that just nails me out and punches me in the face. RNG is officially short for just random number generator. RNG simulations run an insane amount every time per second in every video game where it depends on what happens to you the player with everything. 
if you're playing a survival game and you go loot something, the RNG will run possible outcomes from the different skills you might have to affect what is actually in or what you get, and those play in huge factors of what you find. Sure, there is good RNG where it is lucky for you, but when you're playing a game that's based on accuracy, you don't want to play a game of chance. With the gun, there's no true way to accurately display recoil, so most shooting games will have a set pattern for the guns to shoot. Like with CSGO, the biggest one is the number 7, where if you spray the AK-47, it'll shoot in the pattern of the number 7 where you're aiming. So to counter the recoil as the gun tries to reel up and make that shape, you now have to pull to the bottom left as it goes across, but the pattern will change halfway through the shot. And within the reticle of what you're shooting, there's another smaller RNG spot of where on that 7 is going to hit exactly, where of course it'll hit within this diameter. But that diameter has its own little spot of here, here, and here. It's never a true accurate, this is where you're aiming. The first bullet is always going to be accurate, so most people always opt for headshots than just spraying the gun. But that's the problem. Because now you have to fight the RNG within the hitbox, within the pattern, within the updraft recoil, within the split second of reaction time needed in most situations to actually shoot at the enemy, as you're now trying to also accurately move and follow their pattern while fighting them. On top of, say you're playing on computer, now you also have to fight with your internet speed, your screen speed, and if your computer can even keep up with that front as well. And with the number random generator fighting you, and also being on your side, the main thing is that if you aren't moving, you have a perfectly accurate shot. But there's other times where a kid will come full sprint around a corner, jumping in the air where they have a 5% chance to hit you, and shoot you right in the face from halfway across the map. And all you can do is sit there waiting for the next round to see if the RNG gods spite you for being a filthy monger that decides to spend $400 on skins in the game while the enemy team calls you bad while they get blessed by shooting you through a- I honestly don't mind shooting games, and a lot of them have a lot of that pick up and play feeling because most of them are universal. They just have little gimmicks of, oh, this gun has this spray pattern, or this one has this ability, this one has a certain reticle that you might like in this game, but you'll never find it in another game. And that's what makes them unique, sure. At the same time, that creates a learning curve for all the shooting games that makes them all unique, and each one has their set of smurfs which go from a high rank to a low rank to shut down new players, or as they become more rare in recent, sure, but now you also have hackers running around en masse that will see you through a wall spending a thousand miles an hour and it's fucking hilarious to see. But when you get to live for maybe a quarter of a second and now you have to sit through ten seconds sitting there waiting to come back again. It's a lot. And a lot of shooting games have toxic fan bases where the first thing they do is just trash talk you because it's your first time playing and you suck. And it can all just be too much. And that's my main issue with a lot of shooting games nowadays. No other game can give a group of people so much emotion. The feeling of your first kill when you get it, or when you get in the zone and you by yourself take out an enemy of five other players. It just feels amazing and the euphoria and the just hearing your team on the other end, hearing your headphones go off as everyone's excited for you. It's something you can't find anywhere else and that's also why it's still one of the greatest genres out there. Because of that, FPS games have a magic feeling to them that I absolutely hate because I can't stop myself from wanting to play it. And I just keep playing. <laughs> Let me know. What's the magic for you when you pick up a controller? What genre is it? What game is it? Anything. And please, if you enjoyed hearing the history of shooting and just the side of what is kind of bad about today's era of shooting as well, please like and subscribe. I'd love to see you guys again on the next video.